morning. I don't know why I do these videos. The morning after it. I'm doing a video update here because I've done one for a while. And some of you may be interested to know that recently, as in like two days ago recently, um, I cut 10,000 words out of uh, The Snowing Man. Now, bearing in mind that book is around 135,000 words, I think this is quite a lot. And I um, just thought it might be interesting to share the kind of the process with you. Um, the reason being <coughs> is that I think what happens with that book a lot, I've got a theory. I've got a theory on why some people find, some people can read a book and love it, and others can read it and say, oh, it's terrible because it's slow. And that's the only reason they don't like it. It's not they dislike the plot, it's not that they dislike the characters, they find it slow. And I've got a theory that has a lot to do with reading speed. And I mean intelligence, I don't mean like, oh, you're stupid, you don't get it. I mean literally the speed at which you consume a book. Because you might be a more leisurely reader, you might be somebody, I'm a very, very fast reader, I'm quite impatient, I like to get on with it. So I do think that affects your perception of, of the pace of the story. Now that's not to say some stories are slower than others. The Physics of the Dead is slower than The Black Room. So I, I, I'm always very wary to worry about that too much. You know, I do, I do like to get on with things at the same time if I can. Now, what I realised with The Stone Man was, and uh, this is for people that have read it, so it's full of spoilers here, um, it needed... I thought it maybe needed 10% trimming out of it because I've listening to the audio again, I realised that there were sequences where um, Andy would say something and it'd be either to put the plot or some internal analysis or whatever, and that's fine. And then he'd repeat it or there'd be another paragraph pretty much saying the same thing. And that's just no good. That's, that's That needed to go. So that was some of it, but the, the biggest secret that's gone is... Um, the scene where he goes, just after his house, he finds out that his apartment building's been flattened, and he goes to look at the wreckage, and runs into Sean, and stays at Sean's house, and there's a lengthy sequence where Sean and Laura, um, they have um, kind of moments where he gets a headache, he, she gets a headache, he gets nauseous, and then Andy passes out and has, has a vision, and they theorise about why this is happening, and it leads to, eventually leads to finding out that Sean and Laura are both dyslexic, and that Andy's autistic, and that's why his and Andy's autism combined with being by the stone man when he starts to work, walk, um, being reasons why they have this connection. And then after that, during the night, Andy sleeps with Sean's wife. Now there was that whole scene to establish a couple of things. One, the reason some people think that the sex scene is just gratuitous, and it's not. The whole reason it's in there. Is to establish without doubt that man Andy is a guy who's you know, not the most moral chap. The sequence with the other two getting headaches, etc., was to look at is to establish that the stone man is giving off a signal or following a signal or something on those lines. And I realised not only that, the book kind of stops the debt. The stone man's turned up and started walking, and he's chased after it. Then he goes to look at the ruins of his house. Then he goes to this guy's house and falls asleep. Then he gets up the next morning and they have this conversation about, you know, sort of theories why it could be happening. It goes on for a long time. Then he sleeps with the wife. The only thing that needed, that needs to be in that scene, is Andy needs to faint and have his vision. Because the first time he gets his vision of where he needs to go, and that leads to him figuring out that he can follow the stone man's path or predict it. Um, so that's the only thing that needs to happen. There's other ways of establishing that Andy's an outsider rather than having fucking the guy's wife. And the scene with them having the headaches and stuff and then realising that, you know, it's because they're dyslexic and all that kind of thing, that's interesting. It's the sort of thing I like as a reader. If I'm reading a book and characters are bouncing ideas off each other. But it's not essential, it's not necessary. So, it's all gone. What happens now? is that when Andy goes to the shop where he sees the news footage uh, that he realises his house has been knocked down, buys a bottle, goes out, sits on the bench in the street, drinks it, Sean comes along and invites him to his house. Rather than Andy going there, falling asleep, waking the next morning, having this other conversation, now they go there, Andy goes into the kitchen, 
stops to make some food while they talk. He has his vision, gets up. Oh shit, sorry, I fainted, blah, 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 blah. And see, next morning, as before, Andy then looks at the map and does the business with figuring out the stomach's back. That's it. And that cuts about five or six thousand words out alone. But more importantly, it's not going to lose people. I think a lot of people must, the, the people that have put reviews up saying it's slow, I didn't like it. But not many, you know, something like, um, I think the statistic is literally 1% of, actually or is it 0.1% of people that buy books and Amazon leave reviews. So I think there must be so many people that just gave up on the book because it was taking a while to get going and I never even know about it. And it's not, it's not even so much a sales thing, I want the story to be as good as it can be. So that's now changed. Um, what I've also done as well, and this is a, a marketing thing, um, as those of you who have read it will know, that when the book ends, you've got the authors afterward, and then after that, there's a sample from the black room. And also, I refer to The Physics of the Dead a lot, which is the book I think people should come to last. I'm very, very, very proud of that book. But I think that you should read that, then something else in mind that's a bit more accessible. So by the time you come to The Physics of the Dead, you've got a bit more uh, patience, a bit more of an expectation in me as a writer, and a bit more faith in me to stick with it. Um, so I've taken out all mentions of the title of the book, I just refer to it, I've changed it from, when I mentioned The Visit to the Dead, I just changed it to my first novel. Because I don't want people to go there yet. And more importantly, I've moved the afterword to the back, so the second the Stone Man finishes, it's like, thank you for reading this book, now here's a free sample from one of Luke's other books. So, whether they like it or not, the reader is immediately channeled into another book. The idea being that they'd get hooked, and then we'd go and buy it. Could, now, what that might mean is I stopped getting as many reviews of the Stone Man. The Stone Man's got something like 926 reviews in America right now, and in England I think it's 719. I check the reviews a lot. Um, it doesn't need any more, well, hey, it doesn't need more reviews. But what's more important now is getting people to read the other books and getting reviews. On that book. Keep leaving your reviews, motherfucker. So, it'll be interesting to see what kind of a difference that makes. Because now, I need to start building uh, if I was going to push another of my books next, it would be um, In the Darkness. That's where I know you. And I need to start building up that book now. Because, you know, the, the, the Stone Man kind of um, a nest egg or whatever, it, it, that could all end tomorrow. So I need to start building up the others uh, to the point where I've, I've even, funny I'm saying about the Black Room sample in the book, it's not even named as the Black Room sample, it's now named as the In the Darkness sample because I don't want people going to buy the books in the four part version anymore. I want people to go buy the collected version because that's more likely rather than that's more likely to get reviews, if that makes sense. People are less likely to leave reviews for four parts of a book than they are for that one. It's easier to promote. Blah 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 blah. So that's that. Yeah. Let me show you some actually look, there's a building. video we're up here and we're working right there that's about it really today I thought some of you might be a little bit interested to find out about the or how I approach the editing process and how I'm effectively gambling with the fucking family silver as it were coming back in I could need it I've got a goddamn chin <laughs> 